What's going on WBSC, the Whiskey Network, uh, brings you another live edition of great interviews. My name's Chad, and I'm here with Bill and Tasha. And tonight we have a very, very special guest. And they're going to lead us through a series of tastings of Woodford Double Oak and chocolate. Bill? Yeah, to celebrate the upcoming of Valentine's Day, Woodford Reserve has partnered with an award-winning chocolatier, Philip Ashley Chocolates. And he's showcasing his harmonious pairing between Woodford Reserve Double Oak Bourbon and chocolate. Chad? So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Elizabeth McCall from Mass Assistant Master Distiller at Woodford Reserve Distillery. Elizabeth? Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here to taste double oaked and chocolate with you all. Um, this was a fun uh, idea that actually one of our local, some of our local team members here in Kentucky thought of. They thought of this actually years ago. So it's been in a, a work in the making or a, a project in the making that um, finally is coming to life. I mean, who doesn't enjoy chocolate and double oaked? and um, just putting them together and then a fun way to celebrate Valentine's Day. It's a great time to just get together. And since we can't all be together physically, it's a great thing that you can, you can go out and get chocolate and you can have double oaked and you can kind of feel warm and fuzzy and great inside um, doing this tasting. Uh, so it's one that just basically, you know, double oaked is sweet aromatic forward and what we're doing is using chocolate to pull out all the other wonderful flavors that exist in a glass of Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. So um, for those of you that are not familiar with Woodford Reserve Double Oaked and how we make it, I think we should just talk about this beautiful product. And I can see both of you have your personal selections of the Woodford Double Oaked in front of you. And um, that is just a really fun program where you get to create your own batch and select your own your own batch of Woodford Reserve Double Oak. So yours is going to taste different than mine because I have just the regular old one you buy off the shelf. It's not nothing wrong with like that yours. at all, <laughs> but it's still good. It's still good. So um, I'll take you all through just a quick tasting and we'll talk about this product. So when you nose Woodford Reserve Double Oak, the first thing you get is that it is butterscotch, caramel, just sweet aromatic forward. And when you compare it to the standard Woodford Reserve Distiller Select Bourbon, it's out of balance. Our bourbon is in balance, seeing all five areas of flavor displayed. And um, at Double Oaked, you see all five areas, but the sweet aromatics hit you first. And then you see fruit and floral, you'll see grain, you'll see wood, and you'll see spice characters. So they're kind of in the background hanging out in this whiskey. And these different chocolates are going to help you see those other four areas of flavor. But the way that we achieve this flavor profile is that we start out as Woodford Reserve Distiller Select Bourbon. So our beautifully balanced complex bourbon. And then we will take it when it's ready to go into bottle. Instead of putting it into a bottle, we put it into a second barrel. That second barrel is heavily toasted and lightly charred. When we talk about toasting, I mean that it is going into a heat tunnel where we're just heating the wood up we're not setting it on fire. We're heating it for 40 minutes where the standard barrel is 10 minutes. We're going to 40 minutes, which really gets into the lignin layer of the wood, which is going to bring all those sweet aromatic notes, the vanillin notes out um, in this from this wood. And then we're going to put it through the char tunnel. So we'll flash char it five to 10 seconds. So it is still a new charred oak barrel, making this still a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. And it ages in that second barrel for up to 12 months. And that 12 months is what gives you that significant shift in color and then also in the flavor profile. So that second barrel is really magical and what achieves this. Okay. Uh, with the toasting process, uh, what, what does that uh, enhance in the wood for the whiskey interaction with it for people that don't aren't familiar with it? Yes. So toasting is one of those things that the wood gets toasted when you char it. So toasting is the part where I like to think of it when you have your toaster oven at home and you take your, your piece of bread in there and it's great on its own and, and just um, in the raw state, but when you put it into the toaster oven, heating up that piece of bread 
So heating up your wood pulls out flavor notes, really helps to express them. It's the same thing as when you have a raw, say you have a raw almond and then you have toasted almond. It just enhances that flavor. So it's the same concept, but we're not setting it on fire. So we're not charring it at that point. We're just going through a highly heated chamber, essentially. You can't even go in there. Our controllers at the Cooperage are in a special room so that they aren't exposed to the extreme temperatures, you know, and so it's around like, you know, 400 plus degrees in there. And then from that, that room, it'll go into a char tunnel where we actually set the barrel on fire. So it's a separate process. And it's one that we uh, started doing just to make sure that we achieved the sweetness because toasting really brings out sweetness in the wood. And so we can kind of control for the sweetness level. All right. Okay. Well, if you all are ready, we will get started with this tasting. All right. Let the whiskey flow. All right. So first of all, grounding our palates. Both of you have taken a sip of your double oak. So we've grounded our palates. We see that it's sweet aromatic forward, but there's beautiful spice. There's dried dark fruit. Of course, that toasted oak and some of those grain notes. Now I want you to start with your white chocolate. So we have white chocolate. And I want you to take a small bite and then take a sip of your double oak. Now we're starting with white chocolate because white chocolate is fattier than your other chocolates. Now with this pairing, this brings out the fruit notes. So yes, think it, it is fruity. It brings out the raspberry, um, some of that jammy character, apples, cherries. I mean, I just get an explosion of all this wonderful fruit. And then as it sits on your palate a little longer, I think of that uh, banana bread pudding. It's just kind of that vanilla is there. It's creamy, but the fruit shines through really nicely. Absolutely. I got a big little grin on my face as soon as I sipped the whiskey after I chewed it for a minute. And I was like instant right away. Yeah. It reminded so me of rice pudding, but banana pudding, similar. I get the fruit yeah. as well, but yeah. Yeah. And so it's really fun to just get to, um, to see how these different food items will shift the flavor profile. And the, what, the thing to remember is that if Double Oaks didn't have those other flavor notes in it, you wouldn't be able to taste them. So that's, it's helping your palate find all these flavor notes that exist in the whiskey already. Okay. Um, and the white chocolate is really a fun one because there's the fattiness to it, helps coat your palate a little bit and allows you to just experience flavor. Now let's go ahead and try the milk chocolate. So milk chocolate, um, Again, is a fattier chocolate than your dark chocolate, but it has um, less fat in it than your white chocolate. So go ahead and take a small bite. That's good chocolate, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And so I don't know about you all, but I get a little more spice but mm -hmm. so it's those baking spices that are coming out that cinnamon clove but then i think i get caramel and some of the more sweet aromatics and nuttiness what about you? i got the caramel like a first almost like a mental caramel bar yeah mm -hmm. yeah of course you know you get so much caramel notes in most bourbons it just accentuated that and that was the first thing I love. It's also one of my favorite candies. <laughs> and, and, and the toasted almond, it tastes yeah. like toasted almond. On that almond day. immediately. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it's just what I love is how interesting that we just tasted. This is the same exact whiskey. Mm -hmm. We haven't done anything to it other than introduce the chocolate. And so the chocolate shifts every time um, you, you introduce another one. And so that's what makes this really fun. And it also is very approachable. There's nothing in there that's um, too hard to pick out. And even if you just say, mm, I like milk chocolate better than the white chocolate, you're doing well. You know, that's the fun of bourbon. It's always meant to just be fun and not pretentious. Um, all right, for our third chocolate, let's go ahead and let's taste the dark chocolate. Mm. 
I always find this one to be quite surprising. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Lights up your palate a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Sharp, crisp. Very. Cedar wood, roasted coffee, cocoa. Yes. Milk. Coffee and cocoa. Tobacco. Coffee and cocoa. And a little yeah. tiny bit of raspberry. Just like, yeah. I don't know. Just right there. A teeny tiny bit of that, like, that, dark. That, that sharpness coat. is what actually, uh, like, made me pop up a little bit. I know. I, know. Um, I was like, what is that? Wow. It really was kind of cool. It was fun just watching because all of you <laughs> did that. All of you were kind of like, <laughs> because it takes, I mean, and what I think is so fascinating is that you have this double oaks is the most, I, I jokingly say it is the most friendly Kentucky hello you'll ever get from a bourbon whiskey. It is so friendly, so approachable. And then you add the dark chocolate and it doesn't make it unapproachable, but it <laughs> curves that creamy butteriness and brings out the spice. And so what happens during this tasting is really where the sweetness, because dark chocolate's very complex, I think, and has a lot going on. And the sweetness factor of the two kind of cancel each other out. And then it's, oh, hello, what's going on? Oh, there's spice. There's a lot of richness um, in that chocolate. So, and also in Woodford Reserve. So all those spice notes exist in there but it takes these different chocolates to help you bring it out. So it's not just a indulgent sort of thing. It's an ex exploration of flavor doing this tasting. Right, and also with that little bit of sea salt that's on that dark chocolate, the right there on the really sea salt. Uh, something out and, uh, on my second try of the dark chocolate because I love dark chocolate, but with the sea salt and the it it pairs so well together. Uh, to, I, a lot of times I'll, sit there with like little caramels uh, when I'm drinking yeah. my whiskey. I've never tried it with dark chocolate and I think I just found my new jam. Yep. And, and I do think that, cause when we, when I first, so I guess I'll talk a little bit about the process and how we landed on the chocolates that you have in front of you. Um, because I was given a bunch of different chocolates to kind of taste through and pair with, with double oat. What a and tough job. Fun, a fun <laughs> homework. Um, lesser you know thing to do one evening sitting around the house and um and you know the I was blown away by so the milk chocolate I mean or the white chocolate I'm sorry I just you had to get a high quality white chocolate um we didn't put anything in it because I just thought pure white chocolate on its own was so magical with double oaked I was blown away by the fruitiness of it and then with the milk chocolate I thought with the toasted uh, the almond in there really helps kind of bring out on another level and set it apart from the other two and that woodiness. Um, so those no, those um, the caramel and then the toasted nut sort of thing was great and it really, really made that shine. And then with the dark chocolate, we, we've done it with regular dark chocolate, but then the, the sea salt just really takes it to a whole nother level and brings out mm -hmm. earthiness that you just don't find um, in Woodford typically, in the double oak especially. So um, I thought that that was just such a fun pairing. And so that's how we landed on these specific chocolates. But of course, with any time, kind of tasting you do with Woodford Reserve, any of our expressions, you can really just look at our flavor wheel, which you know you can find on woodfordreserve.com. You can find our flavor wheels and pull any one of those food items and pair it. And it's going to help you train your palate and just a fun thing to do. I don't know if I can pick a favorite out of the three. They're all amazing. Well, good. I'm glad you like them all. I mean, well, they're all so different. You know, it's, it's kind of, um, it, there's not, you, they're, they're hard to compare, really. It's, it's really just like whiskey in general. You know, everybody's palate's going to be a little different. Mm. Uh, for me, I, I absolutely adore the sea salt dark, dark chocolate. I just thought it just brought the zing to the what for double oak of course and it just like everything just fireworks just went off it, it was just a fantastic approach and not taking anything away from the uh, milk chocolate or the white chocolate and admittedly i'm not even a fan of white chocolate but pairing it with the whiskey it, it did something it was like wow this is really cool 
Uh, yeah. You know, just like pairing whiskeys or wines with your food, uh, pair it with your desserts, definitely. What a fantastic project you guys get to play with. Yeah, and I think it's fun. It's a fun thing that people can sit down and do. And um, again, I always am a big fan of doing things that kind of strip away the pretension and the, the sometimes uh, just things that make people get a little nervous about whiskey. Because whiskey, right. there's so much to know. And there's so many whiskeys out there. It's just such a, a kind of um, a big craze right now. And people want to get into it but I think people sometimes are intimidated to, to jump in. And so this is something that's very non-intimidating. It's very fun. You can have the, you know, you all are whiskey connoisseurs. You've consumed quite a bit of whiskey and this is something where you're learning, you know, you're experiencing something different. So even our most, you know, highly educated whiskey consumers, and then to the people who don't drink whiskey and just enjoy chocolate and they can go, Oh, well I can now, participate and have fun and you can come together and it's just about bringing bringing people together in a time when you really can't be together yeah we have a question uh, that was proposed by one of our members when you say the whiskey ages up to 12 months in the second barrel is it a consistent profile you are looking for which might not need 12 months for some barrels uh, that's a great question. So our, we have a spec that we hit. So we're actually Woodford Double Oak Barrels. It's a batching of barrels that are between the ages of six months to 12 months. And so we'll batch barrels from that age range together to give us the consistent flavor profile of Woodford Reserve Double Oak. So it's not more on the 12 month or the six month. It truly is um, a batching of, of that range. Um, but every batch is compared back to a gold standard that Chris Morris and I set. So we do see, because it is a natural product, there's always batch to batch variability. So there's going to be little shifts between each batch, but um, nothing that is should be hugely noticeable by, noticeable by a consumer or you know even some of the most refined palates because we try to keep it within this kind of box. And so um, it, it's always very consistent. Right. Now there's three different batches or variants of the the Woodford Double Oak. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. So That's when, well, that. for the personal selection. Yes. Okay. Cool. And yeah. I'll, I'll say the dark chocolate pairs well with the batch three. Nice. Yeah. Well, you know, and and so the batch three. So when Chris and I put together those personal selection batches, um, they're they're much smaller. So if our standard batch is around 120 barrels. Um, our smaller, our personal selections are about half that size. And okay. so much smaller. So you're going to see a lot more variability because we always know that the smaller your batch size, the more inconsistent, you know, you're going to see all those little nuances that each barrel brings to the batch. And then we also try to pick barrels so that fit a certain flavor profile. So we have barrels that are more the, the um, number three personal selection, that's a little bolder. Um, so, and it's got more of those um, roasted notes to it and, and more of that oak that really stands out. And so that's where you're, you know, I can see why the dark chocolate does pair very nicely with it. Um, and then, you know, we've got the second batch, which is going to be a little more fruity. And then the, um, the first batch is a little more on the lighter spice and some of the sweet aromatics. So it's, it's just interesting. So Woodford Preserve is uh, holding a contest uh, in the first week of February on your Instagram page. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we are doing a giveaway, and I, you all need to tune in to our Instagram page um, just during the first week of February and um, be looking for details. So just stay tuned and, um, and just be looking for different opportunities to enter the contest for a giveaway. Okay. Is there anything anybody has to do, like like tag or? Um, nope. Just follow our Instagram, and you can go to woodfordreserve.com, too, for some more details. Okay, great. Uh, I'll definitely be doing that. Not <laughs> Need any more chocolate? I have a question. Um, how did you decide on the uh, chef, Philip Ashley Ricks, 
for this? Or, or better still, how did you decide on pairing chocolates as opposed to pairing it with some other kind of food or what have you? Good question. So the chocolate was really because Woodford Reserve historically, when we came out with this bourbon, you know, it was um, in 2012 and we were looking to expand the Woodford portfolio because we, we only had our standard Woodford Reserve at that time. And um, so we thought, okay, we can finish it in a barrel that we'll, we can do because we have our own cooperage. We can do our couture barreling where we can custom make a barrel specifically for what we want. And so we wanted to do a barrel that would make it a sweeter uh, bourbon and one that could go on the dessert side of the menu. So double oaked was always thought to be there with the uh, ports and the sherries and, and those after dinner, dinner cognac, you know, um, to have it after dinner, just sip it neat or on the rocks on its own, just to, as a digestive almost. Um, and so, it kind of came naturally that when we started doing dinners, people started putting double oaked with dessert. It was just kind of that would be the pairing, would be the dessert bourbon, and then cooking with it from a culinary standpoint. And so we thought, well, let's do the chocolate pairing tasting. It just kind of fits nicely. And then also to fill that time, not a lot of people do things around Valentine's Day. And so we started doing dinners years ago out at the Woodford Reserve Distillery, um, a Valentine's Day dinner. And so it just sort of built from there. Um, and then the partnership with Philip Ashley, it just sort of um, happened because we saw that he was making chocolate with double oaked um, and, and then looking further into what he was doing with chocolates is just absolutely amazing. I mean, he is a genius when it comes to chocolates and he's just very conscious about it too, very, um, focused on where he's sourcing uh, different, his chocolate from and the different ingredients he uses, always being sustainable. Um, and I mean, it's, he just thinks outside of the box and the chocolates he's put together for our partnership are, I mean, they, they are mind blowing. They are absolutely mind blowing. And um, I've never even heard of blonde chocolate before, but there is a type of chocolate called blonde chocolate, which is sort of a shortbread salty chocolate, which he introduced me to. And um, so I highly recommend once those are available to get his chocolates and to do the pairing because it's it's amazing. So back so in one of our, I'm sorry, Bill. This, gonna... this is just a follow up to that. Oh. One of our, our uh, viewers asked, besides chocolate, is there anything else that has been a surprisingly good pairing to the double oak whiskey? Um, I kind of anything goes, but I think uh, the first thing that came to mind was savory. So some of, um, sort of like a red wine you'd pair with your beef dish, you know, mm -hmm. or, um, a nice ham. Cause there's a lot of sweetness, but there's that richness to double oaked. And I think it just goes so well with your savory dishes. It can stand up to that. So, um, I would recommend that. I think uh, the double oak is actually one of the most versatile heavy oak bourbons on the market. I, I use, I drink it a lot personally, but uh, as far as like pairing with foods and then even cocktails, I think it makes the best old fashioned personally. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I had it at our five year anniversary party uh, at a friend's bar and it makes a hell of old fashioned. And I was like, with the double oak, let's try it that way. Because uh, typically I get a little higher proof when I make cock or have a cocktail, and yeah. was completely blown away how good it was with the double oak. I was like, I don't think I'll ever go back. <laughs> so yeah, well, and and I think it's so interesting because when and I know I I was still I was with Brown Foreman when we put out double oaked, but was not working as closely with Chris Morris as I am today. And when he talks about. Um, when they first introduced it in 2012, and then you see years later, um, you know he they he saw it being used in a mint julep locally in Louisville, you know, out at a restaurant, and it was the it was around during the time, and there was the mint julep on their specialty menu with double oaked, and he thought, I just never thought I'd see the day when double oaked became the standard base spirit in in cocktails and popular cocktails. Um, and that it had kind of taken on that because it really is so versatile. And um, he just thought, oh, it'll be great as a neat or on the rocks and 
on the dessert side of the menu. And, and now it's just going, once people taste it, they get so addicted to it. I mean, they just get hooked because it's so delicious, so easy to sip on. And it goes in cocktails. You can do, I make chocolate chip cookies with it. Um, so you can really do almost anything. Chocolate chip cookies with double oat. Could you yeah. just become my best friend? <laughs> there and they those are really good i've made a ton of batches through the holidays and they don't last long at our house i'll tell you that much so what what do you substitute the the uh, bourbon for in a chocolate chip cookie the the vanilla so where it calls for okay. vanilla you substitute it and i increased the amount of uh, double oak i put in there i think normally i think the first time i made it i did like maybe two tablespoons and I go to four tablespoons because I really want to taste the uh, the double oaked in there and you can't I mean it's they're very aromatic it's it's yummy but what made what inspired me was that when you sip double oaked and the way it finishes on your palate reminds me of the when you when you make the wet ingredients for your chocolate chip cookie it's the vanilla brown sugar and butter and they're all just mixed together and if you make that that's what I get on the finish of double oaked Okay. Uh, now going back to the chocolates, I, I may have uh, not picked it up. What's your favorite pairing, the white chocolate the milk or the uh, dark? Uh, the dark chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge dark chocolate fan, Likewise. so I love dark chocolate, but I just was so blown away by that. I love that pairing so much. I, I'd like to say, I, I used the word, the zing factor. Yeah. Uh, the, the first <laughs> sip after chewing it, it just like, fireworks like I said it's it, it was so it, it was just too cool yeah so um Elizabeth question? yeah a couple of questions um one of our members pardon my voice um they love a good cheese course for dessert uh, do you have any special cheeses that you could probably suggest pairing the double oaked with oh my gosh um well first of all doing pairing cheese with your bourbon we do that with um the standard double or standard Woodford Reserve bourbon. We have a tasting where we start with Parmesan cheese. Um, so we recommend that if you are going to do a cheese pairing, which is always a great idea, uh, to use a aged uh, fatty cheese. So Parmesan cheese, uh, cheddar cheese, but even like a blue cheese would be really good with double oaked, um, just because blue cheese and goes well with sweet. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of explore. Uh, I would just explore. There's really no wrong way to go. I, I don't like very overly stinky cheeses, so I wouldn't go that route, um, but it's great. And the other fun thing about cheese, what it will do is that because it's so fatty, that fattiness of the cheese, if you, do, if you go with the high fat, fat content cheese, um, it's gonna coat your palate and block some of the ethanol from hitting your palate. And so you won't get the, the punch of alcohol, but you will get a lot of flavor. So it's gonna bring out, and you'll probably experience a lot more flavor that way. So it's um, a, an excellent pairing to do. Perfect. Right. So uh, we had another question and it was about your double double load. Uh, oh. it, sold, it sold out in six hours at the gift shop. Yesterday. I know people were waiting, waiting in line for like what, four hours or something crazy something crazy um, yeah I, yep. we she's heard that there's a few select shops in louisville that has bottles mm -hmm. and do you plan on making the double double oak a normal release a once a year maybe or a couple times a year yeah so that's a great question and we when we first released double double in 2015 we had no idea the craze that it would start. Um, and it's definitely a very special whiskey. And it's one that kind of started out as almost an oops that we left. We had some whiskey, some double oak barrels that went beyond that 12 month mark. And so then Chris and I tasted them. We're like, this is special. We're gonna hold on to it a little longer. And so we held on for that 24 month mark um, to kind of double, double it. And, um, and it was just so amazing and so special. And now we do a release once a year. It's always end of January, early February when we release it. And we are talking about possibly making this, you know, it, it's so special that we, you know, do we keep it the way we're doing it or do we make it something that's available on a wider scale 
um, you know, around the world or around the country. And we're, we're talking about it. We don't know yet, nothing's set in stone, um, but it is only available at the distillery and then select Kentucky retailers. And I, I can't tell you which Kentucky retailers it is. I just always tell people, cause people are always asking me, they're like, where is it, where is it? And I'm like, I don't even have a bottle. Like I, I don't, I, I think I'm, I think I may have, I did buy one that I could get, I had to buy one. So, I mean, <laughs> that hot, um, but I don't have a bottle yet. But um, I don't know what retailers it will be at. And you just have to call around and see or drive. But um, I was surprised last year. Um, I was at a couple stores and in even it was mid-February and they still had some. So it is possible. It is possible. But I just I recommend people call around. So to add my input, I recommend a wider distribution of the double double oak. <laughs> I had one bottle a few years ago, or however long ago it was, and it was fantastic. And, you know, it would be something I personally would stock. And I'm sure a lot of people through WBSC would also. Yeah. Well, and that's one of those, that's what we keep talking about. I mean, we're, we're in there, we're like, okay, what are the pros and cons and trying to weigh it all out and, and see, because it, it's so special. And I just, I'm blown away by the by people waiting in line for hours and hours. It's just so cool and that we sell out right away. It's really, really cool. All right. So I'm gonna put you on the spot here, Elizabeth. Um, first of all, do you go by Elizabeth or Liz or Beth? Or oh, what? I, I go by every nickname for Elizabeth you can imagine. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm not offended by any of them, so. We know a lot about Chris Morris, but we don't know a lot about you. So please tell us how you got your start in the whiskey industry and uh, bring you bring us up to speed as to where you are today. Okay, um, well, that's very nice to ask. Um, so I got started with our parent company, Brown Foreman in 2009, and I started as a sensory technician. So I was literally in the lab, setting up tasting panels, washing dishes and entering data. That was my first uh, introduction to the beverage alcohol industry and I was in quality control taste testing so our sensory lab in Louisville it's part of our research and development team um, we have three or now I guess more we have like about four panels so we'll have quality control we have a um, research testing panel we have a consumer advisory panel and then we have descriptive analysis panel and so I managed the quality control panels and um, I actually worked for my manager at the time was uh, was Chris Fletcher, who's now the master distiller with Jack Daniels. So um, just kind of cool story there. And um, I remember him showing me on the interview, the, the new make bottles. So it's not whiskey yet. It's just whiskey right off the still that we were getting ready to test for quality. And um, he let me take a sniff and he was like, that's Jack Daniels right off the still. And I smelled it and I was like, oh my gosh. And I had no idea that whiskey was clear when it came off the still. I mean, I was so novice in, in everything I knew. And, um, and so I started out there and got really, really passionate and excited about quality control. Um, and before I knew it, I was going around to all of our global production facilities, training our our team members on how to properly nose and taste and identify defects in all of our products. So tequila, vodka, formulated products such as like our Chambord um, and Canadian Mist and, and all over in, out at Woodford. And, um, and then I took a class with Chris Morris. So Chris Morris is on all these tasting panels, by the way. So I knew who he was. He didn't know who I was, um, but I, I took a class with him in 2014 and um and he was it was a internal spirits education class and i was the person who showed up early and asked lots of questions and offered to help and um and i guess I, something about me stood out and then later that summer i was asked if i wanted to train to be master taster um and so i took that opportunity i said yes of course and then by the spring of 2015 i was given title of master taster and I worked on both Old Forester and Woodford Reserve at that time. Um, but then by January 2016, I moved out to the Woodford Reserve Distillery 
uh, as master taster and senior quality control specialist exclusively for Woodford Reserve. So I was no longer working on Old Forester at that point um, on any brand way. Um, and then by 20, see, then by 2018, uh, February of 2018, I was promoted to assistant master distiller. And so that's where I am now. And Chris Morris and I work extremely close um, and, you know, he's like a bourbon, I call him my bourbon dad, you know, he's he just, we just jive really well. And it's been hard not being around each other. Um, you know, we, we see each other every once in a while and um, so exciting when we do actually get to physically be together, but we are together virtually all the time. And, you know, it's just a special relationship. We just kind of jive and he's teaching me everything that he can. And, as you all know, he has, he's like an encyclopedia of bourbon. Yes, he has. <laughs> so I'm trying to be a sponge and absorb as much as I possibly can from him. And I'm just so grateful that I get to work so closely with him. Working under the mad scientist of whiskey, that has to be such a thrill for you. Oh, it, it's amazing. I mean, <clears throat> he never, I don't think he really sleeps and he is constantly sending me notes about other ideas, new ideas. Oh, I was just taking a walk or I was doing this and I thought of this new idea and, you know, and we'll talk it through and it's just so much fun to kind of bounce ideas around together. Absolutely. Uh, what's been kind of your biggest surprise or your kind of the cool thing uh, you get to do and see behind the scenes? Oh, um, all of it. But I think what I, one of the things I think is so exciting for me is well, first of all, I love working with our production team. So the team that works out at Woodford, they're some of the greatest men and women I know um, and most talented uh, people and really care and love uh, Woodford Reserve. So I love that I get to work so closely with them and kind of be um, a part of, of just their team. That's the greatest thing. Um, but then it's so fun to get to do, like we're working on a master's collection now and um, we were gonna do, we're we're always working on master's collection. So let me just say that, but <laughs> um, we were gonna do, and and we just kind of, it, with COVID happening, it kind of put some things uh, on the back burner. We couldn't get together the taste. We couldn't work on refining the recipe. Well, we sat down, we got together, and it's one that I was, I can't say too much about it because, you know, it's, it's on. 10 I'll years from now, but um, it, the, I, it's inspired by the chocolate malted rye, which was very popular uh, master's collection that we put out um, in 2019. Yeah. And so this is inspired by that. And when we tasted the chocolate as new make, I was, I was kind of disappointed. You know, we, I put together this grain recipe and I thought this is going to be so cool. And then when we tasted the distillate, it wasn't as delicious as I thought. And then we let it age in our, um, we have a heat chamber sort of, like to do a little bit of accelerated maturation um, in, a, in a barrel. And so we gave it like about a year and tasted it and it was amazing. It's so good. And so that was really fun sitting around with Chris and some of our other team members that we were like, I, and I tasted it and it's kind of like on me to decide, do I like that flavor profile? Do I want to shift it? I mean, that's my responsibility at this point because Chris is saying, He's gonna, he's guiding me, but he's like, this is your, you make the decision. So um, that was just such a cool uh, moment. And I was so excited and I came home and told my husband, you know, we had this, we tasted the, the whiskey that, you know, I, I made, I worked on this. And um, so that was a really fun moment um, to think that this could come to life in a couple of years. And we still have some tweaks to do on it, but um but I think it's going to be really good. And that was just a fun, it's the first time it's ever happened of like the, the it's all on my shoulders kind of. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool though. I mean, that's, you know, the head lady in charge. Yeah. You know, well, and it's just, uh, so it's amazing how whiskey shifts over time, you know, I mean, it, it goes from distillate and you're like, I don't know. And then give it time in the barrel, see what happens. I have a question and it's a personal question uh, mm -hmm. for myself. Uh, I love packaging and presentation. Um, you guys changed your bottle this year for the 17 year old release, which is uh -huh. fantastic. Uh, 
like I was telling you uh, before the interview started, it's probably my top four of the master collection. Uh, what was the decision to change the bottle? Because I um, love the old bottle and I'm not disliking this new bottle by any means. Yeah. I was just pure curiosity. Yeah, well, that's a great question because a lot of people, there was, you know, we had some mixed feedback from it because the pot still shaped bottle people had grown to become very, you know, comfortable with and um, mm -hmm. about. And there are a few factors at play. Number one being that we don't, we didn't own the mold to the old master's collection bottle. So other people could use that mold and put out their products in that same bottle. And so this bottle that we now have is proprietary to Woodford Reserve. We own that mold, that shape. Nobody else can have it. So that was really important to us to have a bottle that would be on, you know, couldn't be used by any other brand or any other product. So um, that was one factor. The other thing was, is that we wanted to get the whole family of brands together that they all had the same shoulder shape. So similar wow. shoulder shapes. And so they're, they're all different, you know, you get the or standard bottle. Yeah. yeah, the shoulder and the neck is is more similar. And that gotcha. was something that we really wanted to uh, make sure it was all kind of lined up and, and more cohesive uh, look to the family of brands. So, um, and plus this bottle also can hold higher proof if we ever wanted to do something higher proof. So that was the, you know, there's a lot of perks to shifting and, and change, making changes. Yeah, that's something we see uh, via social media and different avenues that when uh, uh, the packaging changes via bottle, like the Old Weller Antique, for example, they changed the shape and, oh my God, the old tastes better than the new, this, that, and the other. And when the master collection changed over, uh, myself, I was like, eh, I like the old bottle, but once I actually had this bottle in the hand with the heavy base and everything, I, I thought it was a great bottle. Initially, just looking at the press release of it, I was like, eh, I'm not really sure. Yeah, but, and I think that in photos, depending on how it's photographed, it can look small Yeah. compared to the other one. And, um, it's just because the neck is short or something yeah. or something. Visually, it looks different, but... It's one, it'll grow. I feel like it's going to, I'm still warming up to it too. I love it, but I'm still warming up to it. I'm, I'm really liking it. Like it, it's actually sitting on my, uh, my display shelf, so to speak, uh, as one of my shared whiskeys for when people come over, uh, because I think it's That's a fantastic very nice one. of you to share that. <laughs> uh, and, and anybody who knows me knows you come to my house. If there's a bottle you see, you want to open it, open it, please. Uh, whiskey's meant to be drank together and uh, shared pours. That's the way I yes. do it. That's the philosophy of what WBSE stands behind is share your whiskey. If you're going to flip it, flip it up. Yeah. Uh, I like it, that. That's, that's what we stand for and we stand behind. And uh, so anything in my house is readily available for anybody to share. Uh, so this is, since it's one of the newer releases, I put it up there along with some of my other recent acquisitions and uh but like I said, I picked up two more than yesterday and I might try to get one more <laughs> because I think this is going to go pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, that one's, we won't get anything close to that again for a while or well I'm, ever probably. I'm truly looking forward to seeing what you guys do uh, with the future master collections and your standard releases and, and come on with more food pairings because this has been actually really exciting. The dark chocolate was clearly the winner, I think. Uh, but the big surprise for me was the white chocolate. Yeah. Yep. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, I'd like to raise my glass to you and thank you for joining us this evening. And thank say you. Mine's cheers. gone. I, I know. Gone. I'm like, there's you nothing know, left. Okay. Something in there. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Thank you. This was so wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Anytime. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.